So I will be talking about another uh, very simple test in medical practice today, and that test is what the Desilos test. All right, and under the Desilos test, uh, we actually be talking about the Desilos test following a pattern that was asked during an exam. Okay, so in an exam, some students were asked to discuss the Desilos test under the following subheadings. All right, so uh, we asked what discuss the Desilos test under the following subheadings. I'm talking about the indications of this test. That's basically the uses of this test. I'm talking about the test principle. All right, like the principle behind this test, uh, you'll be talking about the procedure, all right, how this test can be done, and also be talking about what the possible results that we can have from this test, okay? So it's just like, okay, this ILOS test, talking about all these things about this ILOS test. And by the time you end up talking about all these things, you have spoken about everything that you need to know about this ILOS test, okay? So this is this ILOS test, basically a simple monocycle, right? um it's giving us a meal to you all right and this monosaccharide let me just tell you guys the story this monosaccharide is simple monosaccharide that means like a simple glucose right so it doesn't need enzymes to start breaking it down it's a simple stuff it just needs the integrity of your intestine to be intact do you understand so once the integrity of your intestine is intact this monosaccharide will be absorbed all right, so that's just the principle behind the Zylos test, right? But let's just about it. Uh, we said that the Zylos absorption test, the medical test performed to diagnose conditions that present with malabsorption in the proximal small intestine due to the defect in the integrity of the gastrointestinal mucosa. Do you understand? So if you are doing a Zylos test, what are you looking at? You are basically looking at is there any malabsorption and nutrients or food okay nutrients not really being absorbed as it should all right that's basically the uses for desilos test so let's talk about the test principle now why what are the biochemical basis for this we said that desilos test is a monosaccharide or a simple sugar that does not require enzymes for digestion it's a simple sugar okay it does not require digestion prior to its absorption okay so now um its absorption requires an intact mucosa only it just needs the integrity of the gastrointestinal tract to be maintained all right uh to be specific the proximal small intestine understand so once the integrity is intact these islands will be absorbed they can be found in urine and blood you understand but if you're not finding the, uh, these islands in urine and blood that means what there was an absorption problem all right so has the procedure done? Um, has the procedure done? Let me show you guys something. Eight times twenty-nine point six. All right, yeah. I was just trying to look at how you convert ons to meals. Okay. So um, they said the patient takes about what? Let me let me try something again. Eight times thirty. All right, yeah. yeah. Okay, so the patient takes about what, eight ounce, that's 240 mils of water containing 25 grams of the sugar called desilos, okay? So converting this ounce to mils, do you know what you do? Once you have an ounce, you multiply it by what, 30. So eight times 30 is what we have, what, 240, all right? So some literature also tell you that you should multiply it by 29.6, all right? But if you approximate 29.6, that should be like 30. All right, so if you give a patient this um, 240 mils of water, it should become uh, containing about 25 grams of the sugar xylose. Okay, now you should wait for the next five hours. I should measure the amount of xylose in urine. Okay, and um, for blood, if you want to measure it in blood, you just have to wait about what, two to three hours after giving xylose. Okay, so blood samples are collected. So look at this. For the procedure, you have two options. You can be measuring what the levels in. Um, you can be measuring the levels in um, blood. You can be measuring the levels in urine. Okay, whichever one you want. To. All right. So uh, for for urine, you have a different time. 
for blood you have a different term okay so now the blood samples are collected and analyzed before the test so you should make sure that there are no xylos in the blood do you understand okay make sure that there are no xylos in the blood so i don't have an alteration in the um, values okay now what is a, a result interpretation as simple as it is uh, so normal results uh, depend on how much the xylose is given okay so in most cases the results just have to be two can either be positive or negative okay so now a positive result means that what the xylose is found in blood or urine okay and therefore it has been absorbed by the intestine okay thus that means what the integrity of the proximal mucosa is intact that's why it was absorbed all right but when you don't find these xylose in urine or blood then that means what the integrity of the proximal mucosa is not intact so it was not what absorbed okay so that's just how simple and the xylose um absorption test could be all right xylose absorption test uh indication test principle procedures and possible results so that's it goodbye for now